Hello all, I am Shatad Aldhar with Bentley Systems. In this video, I am going to show you how to work with HVAC autofitting preferences and what options are available in there and how they impact your design. So, let us begin. To get to the autofitting preferences dialog, I would need to go to the mechanical tab of the ribbon. Then click on the small diagonal arrow towards the right of the Place Mechanical Systems ribbon group. In the HVAC Autofitting Preferences dialog, there are two main buttons, Save to save the current settings and Restore default settings to revert to default settings. The Autofitting Preferences are available for Elbow, Branch and Transition. The first thing we are going to take a look at is Elbow. There are three kinds of Elbow settings that are available here, Rectangular Elbow settings, Round Elbow settings and Oval Elbow settings. Let us start with Rectangular Elbow settings. In the rectangular elbow settings, we have two different elbow options, radius bend and mitered. For radius bend, we have number of veins, vein type, vein size, and radius options and value. For mitered, on the other hand, we have number of veins, vein type, vein size, and throat length. Let us first see how a radius bend would look like. So, after selecting Radius Bend for Elbow Options for Rectangular Elbow Settings, I will save the preferences by clicking on the Save button. Now, I will place two rectangular ducts at an angle of 90 degrees from each other. That is how a Radius Bend would look like. Now, let me go back to the Autofitting Preferences dialog once again and select Mitered for the Elbow Options for Rectangular Elbow Settings. I will again place a couple rectangular ducts in the same manner. And that is a mitered elbow. Now let us take a look at the options that are available for each of these types of elbows. Let me go back to the autofitting preferences dialog. So the first elbow option for rectangular elbow settings is radius bend. Let us check the first option available for this, number of veins. Here the number of veins is set as 2. Let us save it. Let us place two rectangular ducts at an angle of 90 degrees from each other. Here we can see we have two veins in this elbow. Now let us go back to the Autofitting Preferences dialog and change the number of veins to 3. Let us save this setting and create two more rectangular ducts in the same manner. Here we can see we now have three veins in this elbow. Let us now take a look at Vein Type. The options available for Vein Type in Rectangular Elbow Settings are Short and Long. Let us first select Short and save this setting. Let us place two rectangular ducts at an angle of 90 degrees from each other to see how the short veins look like. There, we have the short veins. Now, let us go back to the Autofitting Preferences and change the Vein Type to Long. Let us save this setting and place two more rectangular ducts in the same manner to check the long veins in the elbow. That is how the long veins look like. Now we will see how the vein size impact the rectangular elbows. So, let us go to the autofitting preferences and let us enter a vein size of, say, 50. Let us save this setting. Now let us place two rectangular ducts in an L shape to check how the veins look like with a vein size of 50. These veins are veins of size 50. Now let us go back to the autofitting preferences and change the vein size to say 250. Let us save this setting and place two more rectangular ducts in the same manner to see the impact of changing this value. And there we can see the difference between the veins of sizes 50 and 250. In case of long veins, vein size act a bit differently. Let us take a look. Let us go to the autofitting preferences and select long for vein type and 50 for vein size. Let us save these settings and place two ducts in an L shape to check how the long veins of size 50 would look like. Now let us go back to the autofitting preferences and change the size to 250. Let us place two more rectangular ducts in the same manner and there you can see the difference between the long veins of size 50 and 250. That's how vein size works in long veins. Now let us take a look at radius options and value for radius bend rectangular elbow settings. There are two options that are available for radius options, radius and rad to dia. 
So to start, let us select radius as the radius option and enter 40 for the value. Let us save these settings and place two rectangular ducts in an L shape to check the impact of these settings. So this is a radius bend of radius 40. Now let us go back to the auto fitting preferences and change the value of the radius to 240. Let us do a save and place a couple of rectangular ducts in the same manner. That is a radius bend of value 240. That is how the radius option radius and its value work to create the rectangular elbow. The other radius option is rad to dia. Let us go to the auto fitting preferences and select rad to dia for radius option and enter 1 as the value. Let us save these settings and place two rectangular ducts in an L shape. That is a rectangular elbow whose rad to dia equals 1. Or in other words, the radius of the center line of the elbow is equal to the dia or width of the duct. Now let us go back to the auto fitting preferences and let us change the value to 2. Let us save this and place two more rectangular ducts in the same manner. Now this elbow has a radius of its center line equals to twice the width of the duct. And that is how rad to dia and its value work. Now let us check the mitered elbow settings for rectangular elbow settings. Let us go to the auto fitting preferences and change the elbow option to mitered for the rectangular elbow settings. Now we can see that radius options and value are no more available, but the throat length is available. So for the first example, let us use 150 for the throat length and save these settings. Now let us place two rectangular ducts in an L shape. Now that's a mitered elbow of throat length 150. Keeping that there, let us go back to the auto fitting preferences and change the throat length to 300. Let us save this setting and place two more rectangular ducts in the same manner. Now this is a mitered elbow of throat length 300. This difference shows how throat length affects mitered elbows for rectangular ducts. In the round elbow settings, the elbow options that we have are stamped, segmented bend, segmented bend end segment and round mitered. If we select stamped, the options that we have are radius options, which has radius and rad to dire as options and value. These radius options work in a similar way like what we have seen for the rectangular elbow settings. For example, with rad to dia having a value 1, the radius of the center line of the elbow will be equal to the diameter of the round duct. And when the value is 2, the radius would be twice the diameter of the round duct. If we select segmented bend for elbow options in the round elbow settings, along with the radius options and value, we also have segment angle field available. To see how it affects the round elbows, let us first enter 3 for the segment angle. Let us save this setting and place two round ducts in an L shape. Here we can see the segments which are at an angle of 3 degrees from their adjacent ones. Now let us go to the auto fitting preferences back again and change the value of the segment angle from 3 to 30. Let us save this setting and place two more round ducts in the same manner. Here we can see that the angle between each pair of adjacent segments is 30 degrees. This is how the segmented bend elbow option work along with the segment angle field for round elbows. Now if we select segmented bend end segment for elbow options for round elbow settings, we get the option for segments. This would be number of segments that would be there in the elbow. Let us for the first example select 3 as the number of segments. Let us save this setting and place two round ducts in an L shape. Here we can see that we have three segments that creates the elbow. Now let us go back to the auto fitting preferences and change the value of segments from 3 to 30 and save the setting. Let us place two more round ducts in the same manner and here we can see that this elbow is now created with 30 segments. Now if we select round mitered for elbow options for round elbow settings, we get the options for number of mitres. Let us start with 3 as the number of mitres. Let us save this setting and place two round ducts in an L shape. So here we can see that we have three mitered segments in this case. Now let us go back to the auto fitting preferences and change the number of mitres from 3 to 30 and do a save. 
let us place two more round ducts in the same manner. And that's how the elbow looks like with 30 mitered segments. In the oval elbow settings, we have only one elbow option, segmented. For that, we have radius options, rad to dire and radius, and value, and segments. The radius options and value here work in the same way as they do in the case of rectangular and round elbow settings. The segments work in a similar manner to what we have seen in the case of round elbow settings. Let us take two segments and save this. Let us place two flat oval ducts in an L shape. This elbow contains two segments. Now, from the autofitting preferences, let us change the segments from 2 to 20 and save it. Let us place two flat oval ducts in a similar manner. Now that's an elbow with 20 segments. Now let us take a look at the branching options that are available in HVAC autofitting preferences in Open Buildings Designer. Let us go to the autofitting preferences dialog and then to branch. Here we have three settings, rectangular branch options, round branch options and oval branch options. Let us start with rectangular branch options. In the rectangular branch options, we have two fields, category and fittings. We have three categories available here, takeoff, lateral and T or crosses. For each of them, we have different kinds of fittings available. So let us first take the takeoff category and angled fitting, which is the default setting. Let us save this and place a rectangular duct like so. Now let us place another rectangular duct that branches out from this duct from here. This is a takeoff branching with an angled fitting. Now let us go to the auto fitting preferences and select radius 1 as the fitting for the takeoff category. Let us save this setting and place another rectangular duct that branches out from this duct from here. This is a takeoff branching with the radius 1 fitting. Again, let us go to the auto fitting preferences and select radius 2 as the fitting and save the setting. Let us place another rectangular duct that branches out from this duct like so. This is how a takeoff with radius 2 fitting looks like. Let us go to the auto fitting preferences once again and this time let us select radius 3 as the fitting. Let us save the setting and place another rectangular duct branching out from this duct from this position. This is a branching with radius 3 fitting. Now let us take a look at the lateral category of rectangular branching options. In the lateral category we have only one fitting, rectangular tap. So let us select that and save this. Now let us place a rectangular duct, like so, and place another rectangular duct that branches out from this duct, like so. So, that's a rectangular tap. Now let us take a look at T or crosses category for the rectangular branching options. Here we have two options of fittings available, radius T and square throat. First, let us select radius T. Let us save this setting and place a rectangular duct like so. Then let us place another rectangular duct that branches out from this duct like so. This is a radius T. Let us go back to the auto fitting preferences and change the fitting to square throat and do a save. Let us place another rectangular duct that branches out from this duct like so. And that is a square throat. Here we can see the difference between the radius T and the square throat. In the round branch options we have takeoff, lateral and T or crosses for the categories. For the takeoff category we have round angled and conical fittings. To start with, let us select round angled as our fitting and save this. Let us place a round duct like this and place another round duct that branches out from this duct like this. This is how a round angled fitting would look like. Now, let us change the fitting to conical. Let us save this and place another round duct that branches out from this duct like so. That's a conical fitting. That is how a round angled and a conical fitting would look like when used in round branching options for auto fitting settings. Now, let us take a look at the lateral category for round branch options. In the lateral category, we only have round tap fitting. So, let us select the round tap fitting and save this setting. 
Let us place a round duct like so and place another round duct that branches out from this duct from here. So that's a round tap fitting. This is how it looks like. Now, let us take a look at the TR crosses category for round branch options. Here we have only one fitting available, and that is round T. So, let us select this fitting and save this setting. Let us place a round duct, like so, and place another round duct that branches out from this duct, like so. This is a round T fitting. In the oval branch options, we have takeoff, lateral, and tear crosses categories as usual. So, let us start with the takeoff category. In here, we have only one fitting, which is oval takeoff. So, let us use that and save this setting. Let us place a flat oval duct like so and then place another flat oval duct to make a branch like so. This is the fitting that we have chosen. This is how it looks like. Now, let us select the lateral category for oval branching options. In the lateral category, we only have the oval tap fitting. So, let us use that fitting and save this setting. Now, let us place a flat oval duct like so, and another flat oval duct that branches out from this duct, like so. So that's the oval tap fitting and this is how it looks. Now let us select the last category which is the T or crosses category. This one has only one fitting, oval T. So let us select that one and save this setting. Let us place a flat oval duct, like so, and then place another flat oval duct as a branch, like so. What we see here is the oval T fitting. We will now see the transition options that are available for auto fitting preferences. So, let us open the auto fitting preferences dialog and go to transition. Here, we have only one option which is maximum angle limit in degrees. By default, it is set to 22. So, let us use that to start with. Let us place a rectangular duct of dimensions 500 mm by 350 mm. Then, without exiting the tool, let us change the dimension of the duct to 1000 mm by 700 mm and place that duct. Here, we can see that a transition is placed. Now, let us change the max angle limit. Let us go to the auto fitting preferences, then transition and let us change the max angle limit from 22 degrees to 5 degrees. Let us again place rectangular ducts like what we have placed earlier starting with a 500mm by 350mm duct and ending with a 1000mm by 700mm duct. Now we can see the difference between the two transitions. This can help us understand how the max angle limit works. This is the same for round oval ducts as well. That will be it for this video. Thank you for staying tuned. I hope it was informative. See you soon. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.